by the authority of the University of Nottingham, vest in my office, I admit you to the degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa. To be honest, I didn't expect it, and it was it just gave me a wonderful, really feeling. The feeling it's not so much of what. I really did personally, but it just I also felt now my institution has really been recognized and it's not it's not really so much of a personal thing, it's just an institutional achievement, that's the way I see it. Because we've really been working almost um, as a group about over thirty years now on the documentation of the flora of Ethiopia. And as I said, it's not only me, it's a group of us that really work it off. So I've been really coordinating this for the last 15, 16 years. So when I got the message that uh, I would get the honorary degree, I just, what I really honestly felt was at last we are really recognized what, what we have really did and what we have really done. So. Luckily, we just finished documenting our flora last August. So we have now a complete information on the plant resources of Ethiopia. So this project started in 1980 and as a training project. And, and I was part of the product of that project. So the whole idea was to really build uh, capacity, the human resource and, and whatever, what have you. And from then on, a group of us were really trained in botany in, in the, at the University of Uppsala, Sweden. And we just embarked on documenting our flora and we were just able to finish it in August 2009. So we're happy that we've uh, been able to accomplish that task and we were also happy because not many floras are really complete. I mean, it's always a start and then just a stops in the middle. We have really been lucky. Uh, and we had internet. I mean, it's not that we have only done it by ourselves. We had international collaboration to really mention a few. We had the universities in Scandinavia, in Germany, in the States, and particularly the Royal Botanical Garden team had really helped us to, to document this flora. So we had international collaboration internal collaboration and we have achieved it and I'm really glad that uh, we were able to be recognized with that achievement. So that was a sense of uh, achievement that I really felt. When we started what we really thought was we would really finish the flora in 15 years because nobody would really uh, be able to fund a project that would last 30 years. I mean, this is because the project has to have a certain duration, it has to be finished. But in the first 15 years, what we really achieved was to really develop the human capacity, and I was part of that. So it really took us almost eight years, nine years to really have the cadre of botanists to, be, to really work on the floor. Once we have done that, it wasn't really a major problem. So once we have the confidence on our own, once we have a recognition of people really in, in, in botanical fields, then it was it was really straightforward. And, but I don't think when I for eight, 15 years, I said, ah, oh, it's just not true, it can't be. But 15 years just was gone like that. And But the good thing was, because we were supported by a bilateral agreement between Ethiopia and, and uh, Sweden, and there was the Swedish International Development Agency that just really saw the potential to really document the flora of Ethiopia, and we were progressing in a positive way, so they, did, they really felt that they couldn't stop. So it was the active participation of botanists internally and externally that uh, 
that really helped us to be uh, financed by Sadek and the, uh, Sida. They just could not stop in the middle of the, the war, so to say. So they, they actually really helped us to finish. And uh, the actual financial support was, I think, finished in 2006. But we had enough uh, information, so we could, we could really do without much uh, financial assistance. But they helped us all the way through, so we're really grateful. It really did, particularly the drought part, because I was, I was, I think, in the 1984 was a very bad, very drought year, and I was actually doing my PhD in, in uh, Sweden then, and I, when you really hit this drought, you just even come to focus, and you know, you really have to think about your, your people really dying and suffering and. It's just not, I mean, they die, they suffer, and that was every day on the news. That surely affected, I mean, our, our moral and, and whatever fabric we really had. So it had an impact, but we had to do it. I mean, the, the only way we would, in the long run, get rid of drought and famine is when we really know what resources that, that we have. And the plant resources are the main resources that the country had because well, this is an agrarian economy and it's not an industrialized country. So we have to know our natural resources. So when things really settle down, that's what we really want to do. We just document. And I think now we have the basic information. It's not, as honest, it's not really our own responsibility to really do what is it. We, we've now provided the basis, so it's up to any other institution that would really like to go on development, tourism, what have you, that should uh, take things on board. We have, even as I see, when we're really almost done, we have, I mean, with, I mean, I'll just show you some of what we've really done is to highlight what we have done is this was um, zoom. Yeah. This was uh, you know we have beautiful uh, orchid uh, diversity in Ethiopia that many people would think oh Ethiopia is really dry you can't really have an orchid now you, you, you have this is a good example that we've really done with colleagues from uh, the Royal Botanical Gardens Kew and Denmark. And we have really documented over 160 species of orchids that people would say, oh, no, Ethiopia is too, too dry. But Ethiopia is really diverse. As I would, this is, you know, this is really uh, just a new book that really came out. But you could really see the diversity here. You have, you can start from a desert here. Okay, that's really desert. But you could also end up in this lush vegetation. You could really also see what the vegetation is like. So Ethiopia in one way is rich in, in natural resources in a way because the perception that people have I mean, Ethiopia is just too dry and too... It's because it is, it's a misconception. I mean, I, I mean we, when we really publish this book, we want to change people's perception. It's not to say that we don't have drought. Surely we have drought. We also have other resources, and and, and if uh, you know people say you know when I sometimes really meet people, and if it is too hot in England, I say oh you you feel at home because you you really uh, you come from a dry country. I say no, it's rather to the contrary. Where I come is about my house is about seven thousand five hundred feet. That's not low. That's not a lowland, and then the. The cap our capital, Addis Ababa, the city varies between 7,500 in the southern part to 9,000 feet on top in the same town. So there is a huge diversity in Ethiopia, it's really diverse. And that's what we really want to show people. It is, it's a diverse country, both culturally, in terms of vegetation, and so we, we, we really have a potential. That's what we really want to exploit our. We want to contribute to the exploitation of our potential uh, by, you know, be it 
tourism or cultural or whatever.